This is Ian Sumrall, Country Sports TV, and I'm just trying to give you an update on the lead situation at the moment. The European Chemical Agency met last Monday and Tuesday, but we haven't had any reports out from them. The only thing that I've seen is the... Um, Lead Ammunition Group, headed by the ex-CEO uh, of Basque, John Swift, met on Wednesday last week. In there, there's a little note, and it says that the lag report should be updated uh, against the report from the chemical agency. Now, does this mean that the chemical agency, European chemical agency, is going to come out and say there shouldn't be a lead ban. I don't know. Have they not gone as far as the lead ammunition group wanted? Now, the lead ammunition group was set up by the last Labour government. Under the Labour government, under Gordon Brown, they had a steering group set up around about 2008-2009, and it was a lead steering group, and that was Basque, the WWT, and the government. The RSPB was what was called a corresponding member. They let them see the minutes and allowed them to comment on it. So that was the gang. Now we'd already had the lead ban for wildfowling in 1999. Now this is 10 years on. And we've got a lead steering group. And I believe the plan was to try and persuade the shooting organisations, that there should be a total lead ban. That's what I believe the plan was. That's what the WWT and RSPB were calling for. Basque was sat on the fence. They were saying, oh no, we got to follow the science, um, we got to do the right thing, um, got to wait for the lead ammunition group to finish. Well, the lead ammunition group met. They looked at all the so-called science. And, of course, half the people on the lead ammunition group had also been writing the scientific papers that they were looking at. Deborah Payne, Cormie, and Harrodine. Yeah, Dr. Harrodine from Basque was working with the WWT on a lot of the papers that they published. How many of those papers they published were peer-reviewed, I'm not sure. They seem to uh, appear on obscure American uh, scientific websites. Uh, I don't think they would ever got, got into nature, uh, because I don't think they would have ever passed peer review. It was all words like presumed. Oh, that isn't a scientific word as far as I know. You can't presume something. Um, there's one word that's, you know, jumped out at me when I was reading one of these reports. It can be presumed. How can you presume a scientific fact? It's not, pre it, it's not a presumption. The information we have now is that the Americans are questioning the ballistics around steel shot. They say as long as we use steel, which is two sizes larger than lead, it performs the same. Unfortunately, in tests that I have done, and I've done the only independent tests in this country, I found that standard steel shot is 20% less penetration 
than lead. Fact. So, steel, in my opinion, is 20% less effective than lead. So it's not the same. So I found that the tests that were done by Rossiter and the ballistics tables that have been produced for steel are misleading. They've been exaggerating the figures to make steel look good. Now, I've never said you can't use steel. What I've said is steel is not as good as lead. And that's it. Now, the next problem we got is, is your gun proofed for steel? They talk about steel shot. Your gun is not proofed for a sh type of shot. Your gun is proofed by pressure, either standard pressure or high performance pressure, which we would call magnum. It is not tested for steel. It's not tested with steel. When they proof guns, they proof shotguns with lead cartridges. It's part of their charter when they when they proof. And we've got, I mean, Mr. Argate, we've got two proof houses in this country. And they have a royal charter, both of them. We've got one in London, which was the first one, which dates back to the 1600s. And we've got a second one in Birmingham, which dates back to the late 1800s. And every gun that is made in this country is proofed by one of the two proof houses. Now, we recognise some of the European countries' proofs, uh, Italian and Spanish, but we don't recognise American proof. So any American gun that comes in, Savages and Winchesters, have to be proofed by our proof houses, London or Birmingham. Now, the proof house will not get involved in this argument about steel and lead. They have got to be non-political. So that leaves it up to the shooter, us, to argue and to find out the facts and tell the facts to other shooters. Now, some shooters say, oh, I've been using steel for warfowl and it's okay. Why can't you use it for game? Like I said, I've never said you can't use steel. I've never said it wouldn't be possible to use it. What I've said is steel is not as good as lead. Full stop. 20% in my test, 20% less effective. Now, if your gun is proofed with lead and the proof marks are put on it, should you be using steel in it? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um, and the proof masters uh, won't be drawn on the question, and, and they they kindly uh, said that they won't answer that question. So, so I haven't got an answer for you. Although they put the Fur de Lis on high performance and they say, oh, that's steel shot proofed. It isn't steel shot proofed. It is high performance proofed for Magnum cartridges. Now, I've used steel. I had a falconer wanted me to shoot pigeons with steel because he didn't want to feed them lead shot pigeons. That's fair enough. That's his decision to make. He was paying me a pound a bird, so Ian was a very happy boy. So I shot the first two pigeons with lead and put them on a flapper and a floater. I then used standard proof steel cartridges. They said you've got to go up a shot size. So if I'm using six for pigeons, I would use four. So I had four six. Four, I'm not going to say what maker cartridge it was, but they were standard proof English cartridges in fours. And all I did, I didn't shoot a bird cleanly all day. 
Every bird was wounded. Yeah, I put them on the floor, but they were all flappers. I had to use the dog on every one. The dog was worn out. You know, anyway, I picked up the steel. And I thought, oh, I want some for myself for the freezer. The pigeons were still coming in, so I reverted back to lead. I put the picked the steel shot birds up and put them in my bag. Then I went back to lead, and everyone I shot after that was dead on the floor. So I'm not a fan of steel. You know, I don't find it as good as lead. You know, and they now talk about biodegradable wads. And I asked the question on my Facebook page. You know, are we, are they, is it plastic? And are we going to be putting microplastics into the environment? They now tell me that the Ely biodegradable plas wads are vegetable matter and that they're biodegradable and end up as fertilizer well what I'd like to know is are they strong enough to hold the steel so that it doesn't damage the barrel some of the uh, steel shot cartridges that we've had the steel has been forced through the plastic and been scratching the barrels. Now, is this going to happen with the Ely cartridges? I don't know. Um, and I'm asking you to check to make sure that the steel is not going through these plasma Now, you're just shooters out there. We have got to start doing our own research on these matters. We cannot rely on the shooting organizations. Most of the shooting organizations are telling me, oh, I, I don't think we're going to be able to defend lead, Ian. I, I think, you know, steel is the way to go. No, it is not the way to go. We can fight this. The science isn't good on steel. The science against lead is bad. It's pseudoscience, a lot of it. A lot of it cannot be trusted. I'm told on some of my research I've done this week that the government under Tony Blair did a survey to find out how many people had died from ingesting lead shot from the time of flintlocks. Now the figure was given me that it cost £20 million, pounds, but I can't can't verify that at all. That's only hearsay. But I haven't seen this report. And I suspect that the answer will be that nobody has died from ingesting steel shot. Now, this is going on all the time. They're saying lead's bad. Lead is inert as a solid. I work with lead all the time. The problem with lead is white lead and red lead. The oxides of lead are the problem. That's why we remove, removed lead from paint. Lead shot on its own is not a problem. It is inert. Steel, on the other hand, will rust. And rust is steel oxide. Or iron oxide, I should say. Now, what effect is that going to have on the environment? You know, none of the scientific papers that I've read have looked at steel and the effects of steel on the environment. All they've looked at is lead and said how bad lead is. It's not good science. Now, there was a report done in America and they fed duck for two years on steel, tungsten and lead and a control group. None of the birds died, but I can't find that report anywhere. 
Another report that was done, they force-fed ducks, lead, steel, and a control group didn't get any. And the, this, the, the research was over 120 days. The duck that were force-fed lead died. They then concluded that it was the lead that killed them. There was no autopsy on the duck done at all to prove it was the lead. The, the paper says that they couldn't afford to do the autopsies. So once again, they presume that it was the lead. This is what we're up against. We're up against bad scientific papers. We need people who are scientists who can fight our corner. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a gunsmith. My, my general knowledge on science is my school days. But I can read scientific papers. I can pick out problems. And I tell you when there is a problem. You don't have to be a scientist to understand scientific papers. But we rely on press reports. We rely on spin doctors. Well, they cannot be trusted. Our shooting organizations could no longer be trusted. If you're a member of a shooting organization, you have to make sure that that shooting organization is working for us. We can defend lead. Lead is the best substance to use. It always has been. Steel is not a good idea. It will damage guns. I'm a gunsmith. I've seen what happens when you use steel. I'll put some photographs on here. Steel shot, splitting, multi-chokes, actually splitting the chokes. Steel shot damaging the inside of barrels. And the problem we've got is that the steel holds together. And when the plasma hits the forcing cone, that's why they were lengthening forcing cones to stop this happening, it creates excess pressure. Now I'm told that the pressure produced at the forcing cone is 15% more with a standard cartridge when the sh steel shot holds together. The lead shot squashes slightly. And then you go on to ballistics. And they start talking about the, the lead shot squashing and going out of shape and not being as severe and not getting good patterns. Had you ever thought that this is how lead shot works? Lead shot doesn't have to be a complete sphere. It doesn't have to hold its shape. When that shot hits a pattern plate at 40 yards, you just want a nice even pattern. It doesn't matter if that shot is misshapen slightly. You know, rugby ball shape rather than round. You know, I, I went home loading with homemade shot. A friend of mine used to make shot. And he gave me a couple of pounds of shot to try out. They were all, they, they were rugby ball shaped round, you know. Um, some of them looked like Saturn with a squash with a ring round it. Oh, they were they, a teardrop shape, some of them. They were all sorts of shapes. And I reloaded ounce load cartridges with felt wads for pigeon shooting. And they worked a treat. I put them on a pattern plate. Yeah, I agree, I had a couple of flyers. But I still had the same pattern as with standard cartridges. So all this got to be a sphere and steel doesn't alter and that's why it's better than lead. It's a load of rubbish. And saying that 
They then talk about kinetic energy and striking energy. Well, what they should be talking about is the penetration. What's the penetration of it? When the lead hits a target, how far does it go in? And the same with steel. I told you in the beginning of this video, the test that I done said that steel doesn't go in 20% less than lead. That's penetration tests. I got no idea. I had no way of measuring the energy of it. And I'm saying again, we cannot rely on the ballistics tables that have been produced by Rossiter. So somebody has to go out there and start doing tests and start getting a decent set of ballistics for steel and compare it with lead. Do the same tests. We need a penetration test done and we need pattern tests done. Then we can start having the argument. You can use my tests as, as a starter and somebody needs to replicate the tests that I've done. And prove me right or prove me wrong. Anyway, this is Ian, Country Sports TV, keeping the lead shot bait debate going. We have to save lead if we're going to save shooting in this country. And it's not just for the environment. They want to bring in steel shot because they know that it'll scrap at least half of the guns that rim the circulation. Anyway, Ian, Country Sports TV, signing off.